Hi Stampers, Diane Davich here with DDStamps.com and today I'm here, we're going to play a little bit with this stamp set called, let me turn to the page it's on, Healing Hugs, down on page 110 in the catalog. This is one of those stamp sets that I absolutely loved when I first saw it. And let me just check my phone. Diane Davich here with DDStamps.com and today I'm here, yep. we're going to play a little bit. Sorry about that. I decided to check to make sure that I was online, and I am. So hopefully you're out there. Oh, great. Norma showed up. People will start coming in, um, and I'll just go ahead and get started. And so we're going to play with this Healing Hug stamp set, because this was one of those stamp sets that, when I first got this catalog, this is in the big catalog, um, I love this set. And I love this distinctive um, stamps that Stampin' Up! is now doing. So this is like a realistic-looking rose and leaves. And then it's got some great coordinating stamps to go with it. But I'm going to mostly use these two. I'm going to use a couple of the, the sentiments too. But I like these stamps. How they do those is they take a picture and then they pop it into your computer, into their computer, to come up with the stamped image. But this was the page that really got me to hooked on it. And I love this page, these two pages. And I know it's because of the colors. Um, this is the card I'm going to show today. So I'm going to show a technique called masking. And for those of you who haven't done any masking, I think you will enjoy this. It's pretty pretty simple once you once you figure out how to do it. But my other thing is, is I love the Bermuda Bay and the Coastal Cabana. I was so happy when Coastal Cabana came back into the catalog, into our color line, because I love the Coastal Cabana color. So we will get started. If you have questions, I am looking at my phone uh, or, or watching the, the video on my phone just to make sure. And I can actually see people's comments on my phone. So if you want to go ahead and pop any questions in there, don't go too fast or I'll miss it. But if I miss it, you can always pop it back in there. So we're going to start with the Healing Hugs. I'm going to start with this card. I do have a couple other cards to show you, too. Um, so I'm using this stamp set. And then one technique I want to show you that I, it, it was okay. It's not my style, put it that way. So anyway, this is the card from the catalog, and, and you can see it's got a lot going on on here. It's not terrible, though. It's got a little bit of a, see the um, doily? Now, the ribbon that they used, I, I don't have that ribbon, so I used some of our new um, ribbon that's two-tone in the Occasions catalog. It's got a Coastal Cabana and the Lemon Lemon Twist, which is what I'm using today. So it's always great to um, get some inspiration from that catalog and then use what you have. Good, it looks like lots of people are here. So Colleen's here, and Anna, and Jana, and Diana. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start with this card. And some of the products that I use, I actually am using one of our doilies. And you can see these doilies are flat on one side and pearlescent on the other. I'm going to probably use the pearlescent side. You can see I just cut off an edge of it. That's what I used on the card. So I didn't need to put the whole thing. And this is going to make several. Um, I've got a couple sheets of Whisper White cardstock, and then I've got a piece of Coastal Cabana that is cut in half. So it's actually five and a half by eight and a half, folded in half is your card base, like that. And then this piece here is um, Whisper White cardstock, and as you can see, as you put it on here, it's just a bit short here. So it's actually like three and a quarter by, I think that's the same size, three and a quarter by five and a quarter is what I used to stamp that. So I'm going to start by stamping my background. And I like like this little, can you see it's got little hat, it's like little cross stitching. And I will tell you, years ago, I was huge into cross stitching. And uh, I did it all the time. And I loved it. And then I found stamping. And I kind of quit with um, the cross stitch. And I know it's because Stamping is fun because you can finish your project with, you know, depending on how complicated, within a couple minutes, but cross-stitching takes forever. In fact, um, this year when we pulled out the kids' Christmas stockings, I did cross-stitch them Christmas stockings when they were younger. And my um, son's wife decided she wanted one too, and so she's, she's ordered one and she's going to cross-stitch it. And good for her proud of her. Um, it took me a couple years before I actually had mine done. So as you can see, I just took the um, that little cross stamp and I just stamped ba the background just in Coastal Cabana on Coastal Cabana cardstock. That's it. So that is done. And then I'm going to come in and now this is where I'm going to show you the masking. 
So I'm going to take, sorry, the big rose and the leaves. This is what I'm going to use to mask. And I'll show you how I made my mask. So you're going to come in, and I'm just, I just use post-it notes. You can use just about anything. And what you're going to do is you're going to just take some ink, ink up that stamp, and stamp it on your post-it note. And then you're going to take this post-it note. I'm going to sneeze here in about two seconds, so sorry. <coughs> sorry about that. You're going to trim that out. You're going to trim that out, and then it's going to look like this. And it, is this actually has a piece of sticky on the edge. And what I do with my post-it notes is when I'm storing them, I just store them on top of my block in my thing so that I always have that mask as long as it holds up. So like this one I'll probably put in here too because it'll give me a second mask. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come in with Bermuda Bay. And this is a great color. Let me clean off my... <laughs> I kept thinking that I'd have everything so organized today, and I did till I started stamping while I was waiting to get started. So I'm just using um, that Clean Up Chamois that Stampin' Up has, and Bermuda Bay ink. Now, the thing is with the distinctive stamps is that it's not very deeply etched. So it's all, if you look close up at it, it's all like dots. So it's not terribly deeply etched. That's how you get using one ink, depending on like, like how close together those dots are. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that down. And I just think that image is so pretty, and that's just that stamp. It's not, uh, it's not several different colors of ink. So then I'm going to take my mask and try to figure out there, the line up of it, and you can see it. Sometimes I cut my mask just a bit, just trim it, like, just slightly into the edge of the actual stamp, because I want to make sure that my paper's not too thick and that I don't get a white halo where I'm stamping there. So once I've got this down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the lemon lime twist. Oh, and the other thing I want to tell you, on these distinctive stamps, let me wash this off before I end up with that color in the wrong ink pad is um, sometimes it's better to have a drier ink pad than a wetter ink pad. And so if your ink pad is, if, if you're getting kind of blotchy and it's not showing up very good, you can always take your ink pad and a spoon or a bone folder. I'm looking for my bone folder. Look at this. And if your ink pad is just a little bit too wet, you can just push your ink away. I'll push a little bit of the ink aside and then ink it up. I know that seems really strange, but with the distinctive stamps, it's actually better to have your ink pad a little bit dry. Now, this particular ink pad, this lemon lime twist, is probably too dry. No, it's not too dry, but it's dry, and I did not want to ink it and have it be too inked, too wet. So you can see where I just took that, and when I take that mask off, those leaves fall right behind the flowers. That's how, that's how simple it is. It truly is that simple. And then you can take, I'm going to take this again and put it back on there. Let's get it on right. Because I used a post-it note, it sticks where I need it to stick. And then I'm coming in with a little pool party and that flower stamp again. And this time I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to stamp it here. It's going to be kind of behind that flower. And then if I wanted to, I could actually bring in, like, these leaves and mask them off, which I think I'll do. And then I'll come in with that flower, and I'm going to stamp that one right up here. And when I pull this off, you'll see that then the flower is behind the leaves. And then, isn't that pretty? So pretty. And then I can move my mask to here, line it up, probably the hardest part. Not really that hard. Once you get it on where you want it to be, then I can come back in with some more leaves and put them there so they're right behind that flower. Super simple. 
once you do it. So you always start with whatever your image is, whatever you want to be in the front, and then work your way back. So what I do is I just, when I'm done with my mask, I actually just store it right on my block. And then I put it into the box so that the next time I come out to use this stamp set, my, my masks are ready to go. So that's masking. And you can see where I, you know, I did get a little halo here. And I probably should have pressed harder. But it's going to be fine. Um, I'd still use the card. Okay, so there's that. Now let's move these out of the way. And put this card together. Maybe. I moved stuff around and now I can't find the, oh there, here's the card base. Okay, so for card base, I'm going to come in with some snail and I'm going to actually add this to the top up here. Now if you look at the actual card in the, in the catalog, right along the top here, they stitched it. I am not doing that because that, that would send me over the edge. Um, some people are really into all that. I personally am not. So I'm going to come back in with some Bermuda Bay, and this time I have Sending You Healing Vibes. And this is just a piece of scrap, as you can tell, I stamped on the back of it. And it's three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm going to show you a little tip here. If you have your stamp set up on a block, and you want to make see how, you know, because sometimes you don't always get them straight. Sometimes they're just a little bit crooked. So what I do is I'm going to take a line on this grid paper, and I'm going to actually look down at my stamp and make sure that I'm straight and then stamp it. And I can see how straight this stamp is. And if you look, I mean, if you're really picky, you look, you can see that it just curves down a little bit. So I can actually take this stamp and line it up onto a piece of grid paper. And then if I want to make it just a little bit more so that it's a little straighter, I can just tilt it just a slight bit. Um, oh, I don't like that. But oh well, we're gonna use it anyway. I wish I would have come down further. So another thing that you can do, this is one of the, those little tips, is just stamp it on like a piece of cardstock. Stamp your image on a piece of cardstock. I don't even like that one. I, I kind of rocked. Stamp it on a piece of cardstock. And then come in with your trimmer. And that's, this is one way that you can make it so it's straight. And then this is going to be three-fourths of an inch. Might even be a little bit less. Three-fourths of an inch. And when I pull that off, I've got pretty darn straight sentiment. And then what I'm going to do on one end is I'm just going to trim in a little bit here. So I'm cutting right in the middle. And then going corner to tip, corner to tip. And there's that piece. So once I've got that done, I'm going to come in with this piece of card. And I'm also going to take... My little doily here, these on the back of this so that I don't lose them. And I'm just going to take my trimmer and I'm actually going to set this up here like this. I hope you can see that way. Oh, yeah, Trim off that doily so you can see where I can get a couple of doilies or a couple of cards out of one doily. I'm just adding a little bit of snail to this, and I'm going to lay this onto my card. Right over where I want it. And then come in with just a snippet of the ribbon. And this time I'm going to add adhesive to the back of this ribbon. Just run it down with some snail. And then line that up where I want it. Oops. And then I actually can come in and trim up my corner or my edges so that they, I'll use my ribbon scissors. So these are scissors that I've got from Stampin' Up! a couple years ago, and I only use them to cut ribbon, and they have a ribbon on there for a reason. And I'm pretty, um, pretty I get pretty serious about my ribbon scissors, so. And then I'm going to take this sentiment, and I'm just going to add a couple dimensions on each, dimensionals on each end. 
flow off. And then line this up on my card like that. So you can see how quickly it goes together once you start it. And then a couple more things that I did is I'm going to bring in um, the fine tip glue and the iridescent sequins. And I'm going to use my pick tool. So this is kind of a cool tool. It's got a little spatula on one end. It's got a poker on, you know, this pulls out spatula and a poker. And then it also has a scoring tool that you can clip onto that end of that tool. I'm going to use this part, which has just a little bit of putty on the end of it, to pick things up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a couple of these iridescent sequins and I'm going to pop them over into this container so I can actually see what colors I've got when I'm working with here. And then I'm going to take my fine tube tip. Now when you're storing your fine tip, a couple of tips, you need to make sure that it's stored standing straight up. And when, you, when you're done with it, you need to make sure, see how that wire is in there? In the cap, you need to make sure that that wire is not, not e the easiest thing with bifocals. Go right down into the tube. So the right so that this wire is inside this tube. And that will help it so that you don't get um, a clogged tip. So I'm just gonna add a few dots where I want some sequins. Put this back on there. And then using my pick tool, it's got that little bit of putty on the end of it. I can just pick up a sequin, pop it down. Which is kind of convenient. And I'm just using several different sequins. There's different sizes, there's different colors. Um, there you go, I just want this tiny one here. That is going to go there. But just to give it a little bit, and then this can actually go back in the in the on the cover, and this putty will last a long, long, long time. So you keep using it and using it and using it and using it. Until it gets hard or not sticky anymore and then you turn this just slightly and more putty will squeeze out but you got to be really careful because if you if you if you sweet if you turn it too much you're going to end up with um it just will keep coming and coming and coming you know how it is with tubes so j very 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 gently t twist it so then i'm going to come in with some white baker's twine And add this into a knot. I don't know, a bow. My hands are kind of um, green because I was playing with some green ink just before I got on. Um, make this a bow. And then I'm going to come in with a mini glue dot. I use these quite often, especially when I'm putting on embellishments. One of the things I like about them is there's, they're on a roll here. And so I'm just going to pull one. You can see how I rolled it. And then it sticks on my, my dirty finger, and then I can put it right to the back of this Baker's Twine knot. That, and that will get attached onto my card, and that's probably not going anywhere. And then what I did on this particular card is I actually decorated the inside. Because I use the Coastal Cabana cardstock, when you open this up, I actually put another piece inside here which was four by five and a quarter, so it gave it a nice border around that. And then you can see where I stamped and masked the flower with the leaves and then the sentiment. So it really pulls it all together. I think that is a beautiful card. And one of the things that they did, let me shut these ink pads before I have um, blue ink on everything. And I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. Put this back in here. The sequins are fun to use, especially, I'm going to clean these because I'm using these, oh, maybe I'm not. Oh, I guess I am. I am going to show another card, but I'm going to show you the envelope because in that picture in the catalog, it shows an envelope that they made to match the card. And although I'm not making the same kind of envelope because they did theirs by hand, I'm going to use a piece of our... Um, Tea Room Specialty Designer Series paper. So this paper is beautiful for lots of things. And it's actually like a copy weight. So it's great for envelopes. So it doesn't have a lot of bulk to it. 
But these colors, you can tell I'm ready for spring. <laughs> As we're going into, I don't know, five days of snow coming up. But um, at least it, it's going to get above zero, which would be nice. Anyway, so we have these. Aren't they beautiful? These colors that are just fabulous. This is the paper on one side. And then when you flip it over, this is the paper on the other side. It's really, really fun. So I'm going to use this paper and I'm going to make an envelope. Uh, let me move that. So to, I'm going to use our envelope maker. Oh no, I lost the... Oh, here it is. So this little scoring tool actually goes down inside there and st stays together, which is nice that it's always together. But um, I have a tendency to take it off and lay it down all over and then I can't find it. But you can always use a regular scoring tool of Snappin' Ups. If you if you lose this one, this one would work too. Okay, so I'm going to make an envelope that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And so I look on here, and I find four and a quarter by five and a half. I need an eight by eight sheet of paper, and I need to score it at three and a half. And so I come in here with this piece of paper. Now I need to be a little careful because this is not like regular designer series paper. It's it's fairly thin. Um, but you punch it and then you slide the scoring tool up and you can feel if you flatten it up against the there's a little hole here it'll take you right down the um this is the score line once you've done the the first score then what you need to do is you just need to line it up with the score line and score it and punch it and actually this measurement then is four and a half but that's i mean they do it by just the first measurement is the measurement that you start with, and then you line it up, line this point up here with these score lines on the on the board. So then you can see you've got an envelope. And the other thing that you can do, I did a very good job of cutting this paper. I think I'll snip that because the other thing that you can do with this is it actually has a corner rounder on the other end. So if you go to the back. And lay that in there. It really finishes out your corners very nicely. Now, then you've got an envelope. So then I'm just going to go ahead and fold in on all those score lines. And then you can see this beautiful envelope. And then you have an option too. So you can have your envelopes like go like this and open on this end. Or you can, like a regular envelope, have those two flaps in and then have this flap and then that have be the flap. So I'll just do it, I'm going to do it this way because I kind of I kind of think that's fun. So I'm going to just go ahead, I'm going to use snail. This would be a great card if you're hand delivering it. And what I do is I flip this over and kind of see, so I'm going to need adhesive here and here. And then once I do that, there's my envelope for my beautiful card that's complete. And putting it all together, and then when you have that that beautiful paper in the background there, it just it just really makes everything look so pretty. This is a tight squeeze because I got some dimensionals on there, but there is cute cute card and envelope. So that is super simple. That's how they did the that's how they did the masking. Um, I hope that I hope that yeah that there's people out there that haven't masked before. Is that what it's called? Masked? Masking? Yeah. Okay, so let me find another. Oh, I got another project here. This is an interesting one. This too was in. Uh, move these cards all the way for now. Okay, so this particular card, let me find my catalog. I keep setting things down. This one is right here in the catalog. This one here. And I, uh, this was one that was like, oh yeah, that'd be fun to show. Well, I gotta be honest with you, it was kind of a pain in the neck. And I'm not really that big on, uh, into the fussiness of it all, but that's all right, because I said I'd show you it. Um, so what they did is they stamped the rose in petal pink. And they stamped the leaves actually in the smoky slate. 
And then they use the blend markers because they're blends and, they, and the classic inks you can use with them. Then they went in and added, I went in and added um, ink. So I added some highlights and I don't know if you can see these, but I just added some of the darker, this color. So I used the dark petal pink and a little tiny bit of light calypso. And it just brings out just a little bit of the shading, but it's okay. But I actually really liked the flower the way that it was already because it already showed that. But I did like the leaves. And so the leaves, what you do is you stamp off in the smoky slate. And then I came in with Granny Apple Green. And I started with like the light and just came around the edge of that leaf. This is just to lay a base so that I know where I want the color to be. You really can't see that slate once you've done that. Okay, once I've done that, then I came and I colored the leaf in this way, and I colored the leaf in this way. And I actually want this leaf to be darker, so then I came in with the darker and did the same basic thing. Only not, I didn't do a ton of it. You know what I mean? I didn't go all the way to the end. And then once I did that, I came back with uh, the lighter of the granny apple and use that to blend out that being careful that and you can always add more and then this one I came around because I wanted this leaf to be towards the front and I'm just gonna do some of the light And then I just took a very little bit of, actually I'm going to use the bullet point, very little bit and came around that one edge like that and then this part just to give it a little bit of shading. Not much. Well, I guess I didn't do that to this one. Oh, I'm do this one. And then blend that in. And every time you go in and see how when I go in with the with the green, the, the light green, it does add another color. So you can get that to shade. Anyway, it was way too fussy for me, way too much coloring. I know that sounds kind of but I just wanted you to know how they did it. So that's how they did it. So they used the gray um, just so you get the image. And then to do the outline area, I don't, let me grab my blue, my cool parte. So to do the edges in blue, they're going to come in with your blender pen and the light. And I'm going to start with the light. And really all you do is you just outline the edge of the flower and then pull it out and they did that all the way around the flower and then if you want you can actually come in with the darker shade of the pool party and get a better get a darker line so it has like shadows, but it's a lot of fussy work. And I couldn't see myself completing the whole card, but I wanted you to know how to do it. Because some people out there could sit around and, I mean, this would be a great project if I was just sitting around watching TV one night. I could stamp these and actually just play in color. And it's very artsy, it's beautiful. I don't know. Maybe I would get into it someday. But right at this point in my life, I'm actually into faster cards. So yeah, it's it, it's just a lot of fun. So that card is in the catalog. And then the other thing I was going to show, I wasn't even going to show that one because I wasn't sure I liked that technique, but I wanted you to see the technique anyway. The next card that I'm going to show, I'm using some Mint Macron. 
And I'm going to show this. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. So this folder, this country floral folder, which is one of the new celebration items Stampin' Up! has. I love this folder. I love just how that looks. It's just gorgeous. But one of the things that you can do with these folders is you can actually add ink to them, and then you get just a bit of a different impression. And so I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm going to come in with the ink. There's a couple ways you can do it. I'll show you what I first did. The first thing I did this is I took my mint macaron. I think this needs to be cleaned because it looks like it has some pink in it. And I was using the pepper plate. So I'm going to go ahead with my, yeah, and just wipe it clean. And actually, if I were making a bunch of these cards, once I put ink on there, when I was completely done, I might take it into the kitchen and just run it under the sink to get all that, all that ink off. Now we're lucky because um, our inks are washable. So what the first time I did it, I just took my ink pad and I went right over the top of this and put ink on because I thought this would be beautiful and I'd really get a contrast with. On that ink on that folder but you can see anywhere where it's clear still it's concave so the ink is sitting at the top and then you put your cardstock in there and when you run it through it looks like this and I went ew I don't know if I like that so you can see how much darker it is where the ink is in between and the, but the flowers certainly stand out a lot so then I was like okay well how can I make this so it's not so bold and crazy and just a real subtle look. And so then I took my little foam roll, roller here. You could probably take a sponge and do the same thing. And I'm not pushing down. I'm just lightly kind of moving that color and blending it so that I don't have blotches. And I'm actually picking up some of the color. So it's just, I'm trying to lighten it. And then once you've done that, you can pop your cardstock in here. Now, some people asked I, uh, online yesterday was what that line is on the on the embossing folders, and really all that is is there is to show you on embossing folders how to line it up so that it's straight. So some of our folders have to um, need to be straight because they might be diagonal or vertical lines or whatever that just helps you line it up so I'm gonna go run this through my big shot and I'll be right back this shouldn't take me but a second anyway you'll see the difference I'm still not convinced I like this that great but I like it better than the darker one so I took more off on this particular piece, and you probably can't see it, but it's just really lightly um, inked on the bottom there. I think if I were going to do this again, I probably would use, I'm going to try something. This is the, uh, the, joy of, the joy of being in my stamp room live. I can actually try something new. I'm going to use Versamark, because that seems like what... The look I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this off good because it's got the mint macaron ink on there. We're going to try move all these out and then grab another piece of cardstock. I'm going to come in with Versamark ink and just like I would did with that ink pad, I'm just going to go ahead and on I always forget about Versamark. So Versamark ink, those of you who don't know, is a great ink. It's very sticky. Uh, it's clear. What it does is it will give a watermark look to a project. That's what I'm doing here. The other thing that it will do is you can use it to emboss with. So it's sticky enough that you would stamp your image and then sprinkle embossing powder over it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and run this through. So bear with me. So anyway, there's lots you can do with Versamark ink. Um, I've had my pads forever, and they're probably not very inky, if that's a word. 
I should have probably re-inked them, but oh yeah, see that's what I like. So even if I had a little bit more, the flowers really pop out. You, you may not see it, but I see the difference. Once I've done that, I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to trim it down to four by five and a quarter. Maybe. This is part right here. So I just trimmed it down to four by five and a quarter. I'm going to take a piece of our Whisper White cardstock and fold that. This is actually the thick Whisper White. So it was five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to take a two inch punch. Now I could have punched this before, or I could punch it after. I'm going to slide my embossed piece in there. I know some people say, don't get rid of that flower, but I'm going to get rid of that flower. I'm going to punch that out. And then I'm going to take some of this Wraith ribbon. I love this uh, tool, coconut tool ribbon. And I'm actually going to run this. And what I like about this ribbon is that it's super easy to tie, it's very stretchy, and it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your card. So I just weave that through the hole there, and then I'm going to tie this in a bow. All around. You can see how stretchy it is, and you can kind of form it, mold it to what you want, cut that off. And then this piece, because this is so embossed, I'm going to use our multi-purpose glue, sometimes referred to as green glue because it has a green cap. And I'm just going to put a little bit on here, and I don't have to get too carried away, but you can see all the texture on the back of this, so it makes it kind of difficult for snail. Um, I just find that this glue works, seems to work better, especially if there's a lot of texture. And then I'm going to add this right onto my card, like that. And then I'm going to take a stamp, take this stamp, this stamp, and we're going to go come in with the mint macaron. So this is, would be considered a monochromatic card. Anytime you're doing monochromatic, it looks good because you're just using one color. And I'm going to take that Get Well stamp and stamp that inside my hole. And then I'm going to take the inside and stamp that. And I could actually stamp more, but you'll see this one I did the little branches in that same set. But really quick and easy cards that um, don't have a lot of bulk. You could make a lot of them. In Know, to, to mail that this is pretty flat. I think you'd be pretty good with that one. So then right before I went on the air, I saw one done in petal pink and I just think, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So this particular card was all done with petal pink. So I cut my, you can see I did cut down my embossed piece, but I put it back onto a petal pink piece of cardstock. And then this ribbon, this was probably a sleeper in the occasions catalog. But it is the variegated ribbon, and I didn't realize how thick it was. I thought it was thinner. I don't know why. You know, you just have to read the measurement. But it's very soft, and I loved the look of this card. And it's just, just changing up a color. So you, this could actually work with any color. This folder could work with any color. Uh, the stamp set is, oh, I've used the whole thing as healing hugs, is what I've used today. And it's totally about sending... Get well cards. Um, but lots of fun things that you can make with it. Put some of my cards out here. Um, yeah, so it's kind of fun. So if anybody has any questions, now's the time to ask. I'm going to uh, say goodbye soon. Ooh, we went a little longer than I normally do. That's all right. Great. I will be online for a little while now. Um, so if you have other questions, put them in the comment section and I'll help you. But other than that, I am going to say goodbye. Thank you. Share this. Uh, up at the top there, you'll see Emily Lou John won the stamp set for this week. So if she wants to get a hold of me, I will let her know what stamp sets I have that she can 
she could get for her door prize. If you like this and comment, that's how you get into the door prize drawing. So I, uh, I get them from, oh, there are more, sorry. No, so Colleen, the, the, that particular stamp set right now only comes in wood and the clear mount. Um, if it carries over to the next catalog, well, it'll still be clear mount or the cling. But it doesn't come in photopolymer. So. so anyway, have a great day. Thank you, and uh, thanks for joining me. Talk to you soon. Bye.